On another matter, we begin reach the period every two years when the Senate begins our process of honoring and bidding farewell to our distinguished colleagues who are soon leaving our ranks. Seeing friends off is hardly a task to look forward to, but it's made more tolerable when I get to boast about and, and embarrass our talented colleagues one last time before they head for the exits. I'll begin today with one of only two current senators who were around when I arrived as a freshman in 1985. By then, of course, Pat Leahy had already made history. When Pat was first elected in 1974, he was the first non-Republican to represent Vermont in the Senate since 1856. And now, after eight terms, he'll depart having made history all over again as his state's longest serving senator by a comfortable margin. Of course, it's the dash in between the dates that matters the most. And to say that Pat Leahy has made the most of his time in Washington would be truly an understatement. Pat first developed his habit for lifelong learning growing up around the printing press of his family's newspaper in Montpelier. But I suspect our friend never hit the books as hard as he did after he found out that the girl for whom he had fallen head over heels, Marcel, spoke not English, but French at home. The way Pat tells it, he wanted to know what Marcel's parents were saying about him, so the studies began. Here in the Senate, the same energy and curiosity led Pat to collect enough policy passions for an entire congressional delegation, from dairy farming to privacy to landmine mitigation. Pat and I got a chance to work closely together during our long tenures, switching off and on as chairman and ranking members of the State Foreign Observations Subcommittee of Appropriations. As often as the majority changed hands during our time, Pat and I made a point of working as partners. He always knew the right time to break up tense negotiations with a stemwinder of an old Irish joke. We rolled up our sleeves and bonded over our shared commitment to extending American influence and promoting our interests using soft power everywhere from East Asia to the former Soviet Union. And like good appropriators, we also bonded over a firm mutual conviction that our true opponent was never each other, it was the House. Our leading subcommittee together saw a major landmine removal effort deservedly come to bear the name of its champion, the Leahy War Victims Fund. And Pat lent equal support to one of my passion projects, our work on behalf of pro-democracy movement in Burma. All of this work was accompanied by great humor. One time, after an election that had turned out well for my side, Pat showed up at our next hearing having found a unique way to show grace in defeat. Here's what happened. He showed up with a yard sign from a campaign of some local candidate where he lived that read McConnell for chairman and remarked that apparently the voters of his neighborhood had gotten their wish. Even just measuring by local votes cast, Pat's colossal Senate legacy put the name Leahy right up there with fellow titans like Kennedy, Stevens, and Inouye. But Pat's legendary service to the people of Vermont has been more than a vote tally. Over eight terms, he's made a point of becoming not just a familiar name, but a familiar, but a friendly face and a committed servant to his neighbors. And it certainly didn't come easy. The way I've heard the story, Pat's first Senate victory came after he wisely dispatched his darling French-speaking emissary, Marcel, into the Francophone enclaves of Vermont's Northeast Kingdom. Of course, we know Marcel is much more than a natural campaigner. She's an accomplished nurse and a treasured member of the Senate's family in her own right. So I know I speak for so many colleagues past and present 
in saying the Senate will miss our distinguished president pro tem, but we know that Pat and Marcel have more than earned some extra free time to spend in their beautiful home state with their kids, Kevin, Alicia, and Mark, and their five grandkids, and with the many neighbors who are grateful, so grateful, for a lifetime of outstanding service. Madam President. The Senator from Vermont. Madam President, while the distinguished leader is still on the <coughs> floor, let me thank him for those remarks. And I know Marcel will thank him too. Of course, our, our spouses have spent a lot of time together and we, we know who the real leaders are in, in, the, uh, in the House. It, Madam Speaker, I, uh, met, uh, Madam Speaker, I'm sorry, um, Madam President, I think to what the uh, leader has said, and he speaks of the time when we worked together, and I appreciate very much, I've told him privately, but I'll say it publicly, I've, I've appreciated the friendship and the work together when, and we did go back and forth over a period of years, part of the time he was chair, part of the time I was chair, in the, but in a very, very important subcommittee, the uh, foreign ops we had, or foreign, everything from foreign aid to a lot of the things we did around, around the world. But that bill would pass on the floor, oft times on a Friday afternoon, where everybody would bring it up, we gotta get out of here. Uh, and it passed virtually unanimously. We'd work out a couple of differences uh, first, talk about them, and then they were gone, and off we went. I remember speaking uh, at a symposium put together by the distinguished leader, and I was given a, presented with a Louisville slugger with my a name on it. Now, throughout the course of any senator's career, and certainly one of 48 years, you get presented with a lot of things which you thank people for and you put them in the closet or the attic. Or this, I would tell the distinguished senator, has stayed public view in my office ever since I came home with it. And I have loved showing it off at, at a time that, where we have to be back together on more things, but we have on that. We talked about the landmine uh, legislation, the war victims crime, I mean the war victims uh, legislation, and I appreciate your uh, work on that, Mr. Leader. And it reflected such good in the Senate, but also the people that were helped by it. There are no um, eradicating landmines. There's no victim of landmines that's going to come in and say, oh, now we, we can support your next campaign. No, they don't even know who we are. They know we helped them. When uh, the leader talked to me about needing Burma, I finally got educated on Burma. And he w I was an easy sell. I think he would uh, agree on that because of the case he made, but also the history he gave me. Uh, I don't want to hold up the Senate. I'll speak longer about these things on the day I leave, which will be soon. I look forward to leaving because Marcel and I can be back home all the time. But I will miss so many friends I've made, the well over 400 senators I've served with. And I think the distinguished leader has served with hundreds also. Some here for a long time, some here sometimes, I think in a couple of instances, for a matter of a month or two. Uh, I prefer a long time to a month or two. 
it's easier to get to know each other. But um, I will speak further about this, but I was honored to be on the floor. Uh, when this happened, I'll now suggest the absolute quorum.